welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome okay i'm Brittany of the Brittany christina collection and this channel focuses on luxury fashion and entrepreneurship so if you're interested in any of those things hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up on this video and leave me a comment i would love to stay connected with you okay you guys so in today's video we are going to be talking about 10 things that small business owners can learn from the Kalana Barfield Brown and Target collaboration okay um if you have not had a chance to watch my previous video I actually did a haul for you all um of all the things that I was able to get my hands on which was pretty much everything <laughs> um and so if you're interested in seeing how I styled these pieces definitely check out the video I will link it in the description box and also somewhere up above okay but um for those who don't know i actually work in the beauty and fashion industry i am an e-commerce and digital marketing manager and so whenever there's like a new collaboration um i am very interested not only in the items themselves but also just the overall rollout and how you know these brands kind of make these things happen um and i have a particular interest in this particular collaboration one because i love target okay i actually used to work there back in a past life but um not only do i love target i also love kalana and so i a hundred percent had to support but i think just looking at the overall rollout i think there's some interesting things that we can learn as small businesses um and even as like bigger brands if you're watching this so this video is going to be broken up into three sections i'm going to talk about the pre-launch strategies i'm going to talk about the launch strategy and then i'm also going to talk about the post-launch strategy okay um and within those three sections i will be referring to things that i thought target did well and things that i felt like could have been a little bit better okay so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video so let's get into the pre-launch strategies for this collaboration so one thing that i love to see was the private event that was hosted um right before the launch um i think hosting an event as a, whether it be in person or virtual is a great way to launch a new product a new brand a new collection whatever you're launching like it is a great an event is a great way to launch and the reason being is because it's a way to you know extend invitations kind of build that personal connection i think being in the digital age sometimes like brands lose sight of that type of connection and events are a really great way to you know just give more context of you know the story behind the brand how it came to be um give people sneak peeks of the actual collection itself answer any questions give any tips okay and then of course invite press and editors so that they can create stories and roll them out as well so i think um there's been several brands that recently have done this um you know created events in order to launch a product or a collection and i think every time i've seen it done like obviously you know the event has to be quality but if it's done well i think this could be an amazing like pre-launch strategy um to help build anticipation for the actual release of the collection so i think having the event was a good thing i would have loved um obviously this event was private so you know invitation only it also would have been great if somehow they were able to have something that you know the general public could have been in whether it's something virtual or you know something else but regardless the event seems like it was a great success and i think it really did build anticipation for the actual launch of the collection itself okay the second thing that I thought that the Target Kalana collab did well was show behind the scenes, okay? They didn't show much, but I think by seeing Kalana in the photo shoots, kind of getting a sneak peek of some of the pieces and how she was styling it. Um, and then also I remember her posting a picture of like fabric swatches of, you know, the actual collection and you know all of that stuff builds anticipation for what's about to happen like your customers on the 
and toes they know that they need to get their coins ready at the end of the day they don't know what's about to drop but they know it's going to be fire because of the person who is you know in partnership and then also just all of the little tidbits of behind the scenes that they are doing so if you are a small brand and you are launching whatever it is that you're launching really think about you know how can you bring the customers along the journey from the beginning before you actually launch okay like get them invested uh you know weeks prior that way they're ready and they're prepared as opposed to them trying to get ready and then you know they aren't able to participate for whatever reason so i think doing events and the behind the scenes po uh, pre-launch are really great strategies that everyone should you know just think about incorporating um as they're launching new products or collections so in terms of what i felt could have been done better um i will say during the pre-launch where was target <laughs> like yes target was probably the one you know hosting the event and yes they were um you know hosting the photo shoots and all that stuff but from a marketing standpoint if i did not follow kalana i would have never known about this collection like real talk and let me know if anyone else feels the same way but i felt like target was pretty quiet like pre-launch but also like during launch and after launch like i it kind of felt like it was the kalana show which i get she was you know the main attraction but to me i felt like target could have did more to support you know and and build and to help to build anticipation for this collection so that was my only con i think pre-launch is that i just didn't really see target's participation and i know that you know target has done several collaborations um with other black owned brands you have the tab with the brown you have christopher john rogers you had the kushney label like you had some other stuff and i think i saw tv ads i saw all types of stuff i didn't see those levers pulled for kalana pre-launch to really get people to know about it and i felt like my girl my girl deserved that you know what i mean so i would have loved to see more of target participation during the marketing rollouts pre-launch all right so let's talk about the launch of the actual collection so the collection launched on ooh sunday september 11th oh that's interesting that they chose to launch on 9 11. anyway um interesting choice of a date um but it launched from my understanding it was unclear of the time it sounded like people were waiting around and started shopping at 3 a.m in the morning okay and i was not gonna get up that early i ended up getting online um and purchasing my items i want to say maybe between the hours of like 7 30 7 30 to like 8 30 probably um is when i made my purchases and i checked out four times um and i talk about a little bit like my journey and actually getting items but we're not talking about this video is not about me um but yeah so it sounded like the earliest that they launched online was at three o'clock and then the items were also in select stores so what i liked about the launch is that it was size inclusive um i believe the sizes range from an extra small to a 4x um which is really great like you know at this day and age it is 2022 we you know want to to see opportunities where everybody can partake um in these launches you know and so i love target has always been a proponent of inclusivity across the board and so i really appreciate that so i wasn't surprised to see that i would have been surprised if it was not size inclusive um but that was great to see okay the other thing is what i liked about the launch um of course the girls went crazy and it was heavy on UGC content. So UGC is user generated content. So people went out into the stores and they took videos and created reels and TikToks of them trying on things right in the fitting rooms of the stores. 
um and when people brought stuff home they would style it differently and so i actually really enjoyed watching those videos of just people i think it's always helpful to see okay what size should i get like if my body type looks like you know someone else's and they get this size then i you know it kind of helps me in my shopping and purchasing decisions so of course it was heavy on the ugc content but what i liked about it is that i really saw a lot of engagement from kalana specifically okay she would repost these uh, stories and reels in her on her page she would respond to people in comments if people had questions like i really saw heavy participation from kalana um i did not see as much participation from target I looked at um, Target's, you know, Instagram feed and, you know, they might have reposted a couple, but Kalana was on the ball. You know, I wish Target would have jumped in a little bit more too, based on what I saw. Okay. This is based on what I saw. Um, but I think that's just a good tactic, you all. I think sometimes when we have brands, we get so caught up in the execution of the launch that we drop the ball on things such as just, you know, if a customer, you know, has a question and put, you know, writes in the comments of a question about what size they should get or whatever, answer it in a timely fashion. Like they're trying, they have intent to purchase and, you know, engage with them. If someone posts a video just saying how much did they love it, you know, it costs nothing just to thank them, you know? And I, th I think, you know, some small, not even just small brands, big brands too, brands in general, we miss that um, human element sometimes when we focus so much on a launch. And so I just wanted to put that out there. I love that I saw that, at least from Kalana, um, you know, really engaging with the customers that were shopping and, you know, trying her best to answer questions. Obviously, she does not work for Target. Like, you know, she didn't know a whole lot in terms of what's going on behind the scenes. But I think she did a great job at like managing expectations and communicating. And I appreciate that because I saw nothing from Target. So um, that was one thing that I really liked. Um, and then the other thing that I thought was interesting um and i this is a part two it was it, done well is a question mark but what i like that it was done was the omni-channel presence of the collection so for those who are not familiar omni-channel just means that the collection was available for purchase on multiple channels multiple platforms you saw it in store you saw it online you saw it on the app as well um, so there were multiple ways that you can get the collection, right? Like it wasn't just siloed to one specific channel. Um, however, and this kind of leads me into what wasn't done so well. I think the execution of it um, was a little messy. Like I was confused. I don't know if I was the only one. Let me know if you was also confused. I think it was not clear. So first of all, let me take a step back. I first purchased online and I went um, probably within about a 30 minute period. I checked out four different times because I was like, let me just buy it, buy everything. And then I'll just make the decision which items I really want. And then I could just return, you know, the rest because sold out is sold out and I'd rather get my hands on it versus having that regret right so when I made my purchases I thought I was done because I thought I purchased all that there was but then as people started going in store and trying things on I was like wait a minute I did not see that item online so I think that was a I don't know if that was strategic on their part in terms of like the omni-channel strategy, it, it appeared as though Target had online only items. So these were items that you could only purchase online and they had in-store only items. So items that you could only purchase in store. But it didn't seem like the app had items that weren't on the actual website as well. I noticed that too. So it was a little bit weird and it was a little bit all over the place and it was not clear. There was not one channel that had the full assortment and so i think because that happened it caused people to purchase both online 
and in store, right? And the good thing in Target's case about doing that, right? Like you having people go online, but you also like are forcing them to go in store to see what's there and see what they can get is that you guys know whenever you step foot in Target, you never come out with just the thing that you went in to get, okay? I went, I had already spent a lot of money, went in Target to try to see if I could find some of the outerwear, like the jacket and the vest. And I came out with like four pairs of shoes and all types of stuff. It was crazy. It's crazy. Like I, I still need to do like a complete Target haul. So I might do that a little bit later. But I think that's like, that's a plus for Target is that, you know, you buy the collection, but you know, by you being in store, you're impulse buying, you're buying other things that you probably didn't have an intent to do, right? So from an omni-channel standpoint, how they rolled it out, it forced people to shop both online and in store. Was that intentional? I don't know. It is unclear if that was meant to happen, but um, it's something that I noticed, right? I'll say this, what wasn't clear and what they could have done better is communicate which stores were going to have this collection, okay? Online, um, I don't, so I know they have like a store locator online. It was not correct. Um, there were some <laughs> pieces that say, you know, it had one left and then you go into that store and there was actually more than just one left. I don't know if it was difficult for them to like keep track or what, or if they purposely like hit the counts or whatever, but it wasn't clear which stores had the collection. And then even the stores that had the collection, it was not clear how many and what sizes were available and all of that stuff. So I think, you know, the next time they do this, they have to get that together because I saw something online. There was a, you know, a woman who drove two hours to a Target store just to, you know, get whatever scraps that she could because the local Target stores didn't have it. And then the other thing is you would think that the Target stores that did have these collections were the ones that typically have everything. But, you know, the bigger stores that have like all of this stuff and I don't know, I don't know how they chose which stores this collection will go to. It it almost kind of seems based on the local stores in my area that they wanted to drive traffic to stores that didn't get that much traffic. So the, 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 um, the popular stores in the area didn't carry the collection, but the store that it's like, why would you, why would, you know, I don't know. It was weird. I didn't understand the selection of stores, but I think regardless of the strategy, they should have communicated a little bit better so that customers, you know, are not going in this frenzy trying to find the stuff. Like, I think at the end of the day, in terms of customer experience, like you have to put your, your mindset, you know, in the shoes of the customer that's shopping. Like if I, if I'm shopping and looking for this collection, what would I expect? If I go online, I expect to see everything, right? And if we don't, if you don't want to do that, then you should, there should be some sort of like communication that the online won't have everything. I don't know. It was just a little bit weird. I think the execution could have been a lot better, but I got my stuff. So, <laughs> okay. So let's talk about post launch. Um, so what was interesting is that halfway through the week, like two to three days in, they decided to launch the remainder of the collection online. Now, because there was more than one item that was launched, I am coming to the conclusion that this was strategic and it and it wasn't oh like we don't have the pieces because typically when when a brand launches like they'll have it in their warehouse so it should goes online first before it even goes in store so the fact that they paused on that like I don't know if it was an accident and they were trying to correct their mistake or if that was always like the strategy um Either way, I think by them launching halfway through, um, continued the excitement and the hype, right? People still continue to buy. Things still continue to sell out in record rates. <laughs> like it was just, it was ridiculous. So if you weren't 
on social media and again i saw the reason why i knew that they did this second drop is because kalana posted it i still have not seen anything from target you guys i have not um but i do know that throughout the fall and this is based on the website there are going to be new pieces dropped in partnership with kalana throughout the fall so it's not clear what that looks like how many pieces if it's going to be in all stores or what like I, it's not clear what but there are more things dropping so i did just want to highlight that piece because when you think about a long-term strategy of partnering with an influencer like it should be there should be some sort of long-term strategy it shouldn't just be for the moment and i think a lot of brands get caught up in the actual launch day that like they miss the pre-launch and they miss the the post-launch right like there's a cycle when it comes to launching something um in a the most effective way and like a lot of brands miss that so the fact that this partnership appears to be long term i think is a good thing and also the last thing that i want to just mention i think the like kalana was the perfect um influencer to collaborate with and it shows the importance of choosing the right partner okay um she is a fashion girl she's in the industry like everybody loves her her style is amazing like you know and it's really using her talents and her skills to really like drive this and i thought that it just made it so easy and effortless so i think this really shows you know the power of choosing the correct influencer for your brand because overall this collaboration was a success yes like there were things that could have been done better but by the looks that everything is sold out target is sitting happy right now okay i will say though kalana carried this entire launch again if i did not follow kalana i still to this day would not know that this even happened because target like they've only posted like once like i i don't know i'm just really shocked and surprised now i will say to target's defense just to give a holistic view that you know when brands see that their launch they originally when they see the sell-through rate is um pacing a lot faster than what they originally anticipated sometimes they will pull back because at the end of the day the last thing you want to do is market something that's out of stock because that's going to create an even bigger problem for the customer so i could see that happening based on day one when they launched and everything was flying off the shelves like i could see a scenario where the reason why they haven't been marketing as much is because they simply don't have the stock and so they maybe they plan things for the week but then they cut back because there would have been no point um but even if that were the case they still could have showed up more pre-launch you know what i mean so i don't know we'll see again if there are several drops happening throughout the fall i hope that they're taking like you know the correct precautions to kind of do this again this is the first time that they are doing the future collective uh, collection so you know anytime you do something for the first time it's a learning experience but overall this collection was a success the launch was a success like the numbers don't lie the inventory don't lie you know what i mean like it you cannot deny that this was a success but i will say that there are still some things to think about and observe so if I know Black Friday's coming up and I, you know, I do plan to continue to do more tips just to kind of help businesses prepare for Black Friday. But if you thought that this was helpful, leave me a comment down below. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you were able to get your hands on anything, if you experienced, you know, anything, if you agree with some of my points, like just, you know, chat with me down below. Um, but I'm super excited and I will see you all in my next video.